Hello and welcome to Hashtag Hunger Project. For the next two hours, you will be listening to passionate people talk about a laudable goal, how to end hunger. Is it possible? How do we go about doing it? What is the situation, not just globally, but here in the Philippines? How does this affect you? Um, we've got high level guests to talk to us about it. They are passionate, as I told you about it, both from a personal and a high level, uh, a policy level. Uh, joining us is uh, Department of Social Welfare Secretary Dinky Soliman, Representative Lenny Robredo from Camarines Sur, and the World Food Programs Country Director Praveen Agrawal. This is a topic that really brings all those economic numbers down to Filipino homes and the Filipino people. Uh, to kick off this conversation, um, you will hear a presentation from the founder of Move PH, Rappler's Move PH, Chai Hofilenya. She is now the head of our investigative unit. It's strange, investigati investigating hunger. That's exactly what she did. Um, listen. Join the conversation, use the hashtag, hashtag hunger project. Let me call Chai Hofilenya up. Again, we're being live streamed globally. Listen in, join the conversation, use the hashtag hunger project. Chai Hofilenya takes the stage. Thank you, Maria. Good morning, everyone. We're very happy that you could join us. Uh, we heard that um, coming over took, took quite some time on a Monday, especially, and traffic must have been horrible, but we're all here. Um, we're here because we want to talk about hunger, which is a very, very important topic. Um, it's usually not a very sexy topic, but um, we think it's important enough that uh, we, should, we should really discuss it and bring it on, on, on the agenda. Um, but to begin, I'd like to share with you snapshots of hunger. We, we did some research on, on the issue, and just to kick off the discussion, um, this is not to criticize government or um, to, to lay uh, blame on anybody, but this is just to show what, what we have seen. This is, the situ this is the hunger situation. And this is a partnership with um, the DSWD, the Department of Social Welfare and Development, as well as the World Food Program, two agencies that are very, very important and key in, in trying to fight hunger. So I'd like to start with the big picture. Um, if we look at the Global Hunger Index, which sort of situates where the Philippines is vis-a-vis -vis other countries in the world, um, we, we, we can see that uh, our score is really from, with a scale of, of uh, uh, from zero to 100, the Philippines has a ranking of 13.2. Um, just to backtrack a bit, the GHI calculation is really based on three factors. We look at undernourishment, child underweight, and child mortality. Um, the low end would be uh, less than five, and the high end, extremely alarming rate, would be 30 plus. The Philippines is not at the low end, and neither is it in the alarming end, in that, in that, in that entire spectrum. Rather, um, its ranking is 13.2. So um, this is within the 10 to 19.9 range, which is described as serious. So this is as of 2013. Um, this is actually an improvement. If you look at our score in 1990, we had a, a very high score of 19.9. So that's very, very close to 20. Um, so this has been brought down to just 13.2. But I'm not saying just, because I think um, it still requires a lot of, a lot of work. Um, worldwide, the Philippines also ranks 28th. So that's just, that's just to give you an, an, an idea of where, of where we stand. Now, we also looked at um, the Social Weather Station's fourth quarter survey, because this is the most recent. And people were asked to, to rank themselves in terms of uh, being poor and being food poor. So this is what we saw, according to the Social Weather Stations. Metro Manila, in Metro Manila, 46% ranked themselves as poor, 32% as food poor, 
in Luzon, it's 50% poor, 36% food poor. In the Visayas, this is high, 68% poor and 52% food poor. In Mindanao also, it's calling attention. 61% um, are uh, perceive themselves to be poor and 47% are food poor. So by the end of last year, 2013, more Filipinos are hungry. And you can imagine, I, I'm, um, I'm, I'm just guessing that uh, as a result of Yolanda and all the other disasters that hit recently, uh, there are more people who are hungry because as you know, after a disaster, after a disaster um, um, hungry, uh, hungry people would, no, um, uh, there would be more hungry people afterwards. And 41% and, uh, or 8.8% of households nationwide are poor. Now let's look at uh, undernutrition. As of 2012, the prevalence rate for undernutrition was 17%. Um, this, the definition of undernutrition, according to UNICEF, is uh, it's manifested by people who are underweight, who are stunted, wasted, and who suffer from micronutrient deficiencies. Um, before, before we looked into hunger, I thought wasted meant another thing. Uh, <laughs> same thing with, well, stunted also, but if you, if you look at it in the, in the perspective of hunger, it, it's, it's different. And I will, we will be able to look at figures later on under wasting and, and stunting. 15.6 um, million from 2011 to 2013 were undernourished. And if you look at food security, um, this is defined as physical, physical and economic access to sufficient, safe, nutritious food so that people who have access to it are able to enjoy an active and healthy life. Um, if you look at the statistics, ARM calls attention to itself. It has an alarming 78.9% food insecure adults and 64.3% food insecure children. So that ties in with, uh, with the big picture a while ago about uh, Mindanao and, and the Visayas. Next, let's look at food inadequacy. Uh, compared to countries in the region, the Philippines is mid-range in terms of food adequacy. From 2010 to 2012, we had a rating of 23.8. This is the fifth highest, the highest being East Timor. That's for 2010 to 2012. And then from 2005, to 2012, that's uh, an eight-year period, um, the Philippines was able to reduce food inadequacy by only 1.7%. So that's over an eight-year period, food inadequacy was reduced by only 1.7%. And this is according to the FAO. Um, let's look at hunger and children, because children are probably one of the more vulnerable sectors. And uh, we often say that intervention in so far as nutrition and, and food is concerned, feeding is concerned, should happen um, for children ages aged from zero to five years old. Because beyond five years old, it's the, the, the effect of malnutrition and food inadequacy might be difficult to, to reverse. So that is the critical period for, for intervention. So what, what did we see? Um, the underweight children in 2011 were 20.2%. It's a slight, very, very slight improvement from 2003 where, where underweight children were 20.7%. And then the Philippines is the 10th country in the world, not just in Asia, but in the world, which is most affected by wasting. What is wasting? It's not being drugged. Um, this is the definition by the World Food Program. Um, it's, be, it's having or suffering from low weight 
for one's height. So you might be very tall, but you're actually underweight. So wasting is a symptom of acute undernutrition that could impair the immune system and the overall uh, development of, of a child. Um, and seven, yeah, another statistic here, 7.3% of children under five years old were affected by wasting in 2011. Next, next let's look at stunting. Stunting is shortness for age uh, due to long-term nutritional deprivation. So there, um, if, if there is um, inadequate nutrition, then this could affect a child's uh, mental development. Uh, the child will most likely perform very poorly in school. And if a child performs very poorly in school, that will affect um, productivity, that will affect chances of getting employed in the future. Uh, let's look at the results. The Philippines is the ninth country, again, in the world with the most number of stunted children under five years old. And when, and, and when we saw this, we were, we were quite surprised. We, we never really paid attention to stunting until, until we saw these figures. And then 33.6%, that's more than a third, about a third of children under five were stunted in 2011. Um, these are the latest available figures for stunting. That's why this is 2011. Uh, and then for, for 2008 to 2011, across all regions, the stunting prevalence was never lower than 22%. So one out of five is stunted, and that's nationwide in all regions. And again, ARM has the highest prevalence of underweight and wasted children. Next, let's look at um, hunger and education. In the world, the Philippines is the fifth country with the most number of school dropouts. So you can imagine the, the implications of that on, on the future. If a lot of our students are not completing college or even or are not finishing school, then what will the future hold for them? In Southeast Asia, just in the region. We are the third least competitive in terms of primary education and health. And these are uh, based on the pillars. Education and health are the pillars of the Global Competitiveness uh, Index. This is a report that's put together by the World Economic Forum. And this is from 2013 to 2014. Also, the Philippines ranked 96 out of 148 countries just above Cambodia. So we're slightly uh, better than Cambodia, which had a ranking of 99, and Myanmar, which ranked 111. Um, that, and among, uh, for those taking the National Achievement Test, among high school seniors, the average score was 48.9%. So this is less than 50%, this is low average. Then let's look at hunger and pregnant women. One out of every four, 25% of uh, pregnant women with children who are aged zero to five years old, that's the critical period as I was saying a while ago. Um, one out of every four is nutritionally at risk. So our pregnant women are not eating well, they're not being fed well. Close to 25, sorry, close to 12% of lactating mothers are underweight. That would have implications on, on their kids, on, on, on their infants, on the babies that, that are born later on. If they are not, if, um, if they are not fed well, uh, if they are not, um, if they do not have good nutrition, then that will most likely affect the weight of, of their infants. So um, let the, the low birth weight babies are really a result of the poor nutrition of, of women before and during pregnancy. 
we we classify them as low birth weight when they when when the babies are below or, or are less than 2,500 grams at birth. And so the cycle of hunger, undernourishment, and food inadequacy just continues and, and goes on. So that cycle needs to be broken. Um, but there is a belief that even if it goes on, people can intervene and people can actually do something about it. So during the... Um, during the Zero Hunger Challenge, next slide, please. Um, this was said by Ertherin Cousin of WFP. He was, uh, he was the WFP executive director in 2014. Eliminating hunger is a moral imperative that the world cannot afford to ignore. It's not just the right thing to do, it is the smart thing to do. So it makes perfect sense for people to try to be involved in trying to put an end to hunger because it will affect a nation's future. So if we want, if we want to build a, a strong, resilient nation, our people should be prepared for, for that future. And we will not have them if they are not, if they are not fed well and if um, they do not have good nutrition. This is actually uh, the backdrop. This is the reason why we created um, what we call the microsite. Uh, this is the project, the Hunger Project microsite. As I said earlier, it's a partnership between um, the SWD, WFP, and Rappler. We hope that this will be an opportunity to mainstream the issue of hunger, to mainstream the problem of hunger. It's not. It's not um, an esoteric term. It's not an esoteric, esoteric concept. It's it's day to day. It's on the ground. People feel it. Uh, not only women, not only pregnant women, but even children uh, suffer from it. So through through this site, um, we hope to be able to um, collate information, statistics, even narratives and stories. Uh, even success stories. Uh, we're, we're interested in what NGOs are doing, um, those who have been trying to, um, to fight hunger and, and have their own campaigns. And we're also interested in what government has been able to do successfully at the local level, most especially. Because um, I think we think that um, it's, it's much easier to be effective at the local level. And when, that, and, and when that is replicated and multiplied, then the impact will be felt at the national level. So if you will look at, if you get the chance to, to visit the, the microsite, um, on, on the right side is, uh, we're, we're trying to build a community as well. So we're, we're pulling in tweets. So, so long as you, if you, um, if you are able to tweet, for example, using the hashtag hunger project, it will, it will appear on the site. So what is, what is the point of that? Uh, it's not just being, being visible on social media, but rather it's knowing who is part of, uh, who is part of the advocacy, who is the, doing something about hunger. So an awareness about uh, communities comes about so that hopefully it would be easier to, to work together and to even coordinate efforts so that um, efforts are not replicated and, and resources are, are, are spent more efficiently. Um, besides the social media aspect of, of the site, we also have a map of food security across the nation. Um, this is what I was, I was telling you a while ago. You, it would be, through the map, you would be able to see which, which regions are, are problematic. So from here, the red, the red area is really um, ARMM. So again, um, ARMM, ARM, needs attention. Um, and then besides that, we also have uh, stories. So if you on the right side. Um, there would be stories, researches, accounts. Um, we've, been, we've been doing research and um, putting, storifying all these information so that not only, not only NGOs and not only advocates would, would be drawn to the site, but even students, uh, the, young, the younger, the youth 
who, who would probably be in a, in a good position as well to do something about this, activate their own networks and, and, and go all out and, and try to do something. We also have um, commentary, and the latest one that we published was addressed to the president very aptly, and it's titled, Mr. President, please take the lead on hunger. So this is a piece by Dr. Marilyn Dangilan. Um, we also have infographics. So here we try to show you visually what the, what the um, hunger statistics say. So for example, if you, if you click on, uh, on the icons, you would see more, uh, more information. 842 million people are suffering from chronic undernourishment. So all, if, you, if you click on all, um, you would be able to see more statistics and, and useful information on hunger. And finally, uh, we also have on the site an animation. Um, this is also to popularize hunger. We, we've been saying that hunger is, some, is, is a problem that can be solved. There can be efficient and effective interventions. So let's, let's watch this brief animation. The world has a population of about 7 billion. 840 million suffer from chronic hunger. That's about 1 in 8 people. 98% of the hungry live in developing countries. Not enough resources to feed the world? Wrong. It's just that not all have access to food. Ironically, those most vulnerable to hunger are directly involved in food production. One half of the hungry belong to small farming communities. Hunger persists because of conflict and war, natural disasters, climate change, and poverty. But hunger actually starts in the womb. Every year, 17 million children are born underweight. Ideally, a minimum of 1,800 kilocalories a day should be consumed to be healthy. Yet many people go through days, weeks, and months living on much less. Undernourishment is the lack of enough energy and nutrients. It is a less visible form of hunger that affects mothers, children, urban, and rural poor. Hunger continues to be a serious problem. 3.1 million children die of malnutrition each year. That's almost 45% of all deaths in children under 5 years old. But hunger can be stopped. You can do something about it. You just need to know how. Engage and help. Spark change. Stop hunger.